this is old man Tony here again. Hope you're all well. It's turned out to be a lovely day again. And welcome back to my story about my local hero, Robert Kett. And this is part two. So just a quick catch up. Robert Kett and his band of um, rebels had gathered together and decided to march on the city to put forward to their grievances about the Enclosure Act which had taken away their rights to use of the common land. They gathered together at Wyndham and then marched on Norwich gathering together more and more people as they went. They'd had representations asking them to disperse but they'd refused that and decided to go on to the city they wanted to put their point of view forward to the Crown and the city represented the Crown in the area. So the rebels had been refused the right to march through the city so they decided to take an alternative route and set up camp on Mousehold Heath just north of Norwich on a hill overlooking the city. So here we are on Mousehold Heath where the rebels had set up encampment. By now the numbers had ridden to about 16,000, no, no mean feat. And they'd come from um, at least 20 parishes around the area gathering together. And this was only one encampment in East Anglia. There were a whole number of others as well. But this was the biggest one and the most famous one. They would wanted to air their grievances but so far they hadn't really been allowed to. So they set up camp here overlooking the city of Norwich where they thought they'd find the place where they could air all their grievances and get some sort of satisfaction. Here on Mousehold, Ket set up his council with representatives from each of the parishes that had joined in with him and also one representative from Suffolk as well that had come across the border. Here they set up their administrative offices with, and tried to decide what to do next. They were overlooking Norwich, which at this time, in 1549, was the second largest city in, in the UK after London. And um, bearing in mind Kett's group now numbered over 16,000, the, the city of Norwich only had a population of 12,000. So by now it was a formidable force. Here they drew up an extens extensive list of demands with all their grievances and arranged for it to send to um, the protector of England at the time, Lord Somerset, who was um, standing in for power due to the king's young age at the time. The list of demands really was all about the grievances of um, the declining rights of tenants, the destruction of common land and all the other things we've talked about before. During all this time there was a bit of a truce between the camp and the city and um, no real action had taken place. But by the 21st of July, which is um, two or three weeks after three weeks, I think, close on, after the rebels first gathered, a messenger came back from London and with representatives of the cities came up here to Mousehold Heath and declared that this gathering was a rebellion and that if they dispersed now, everybody would get a pardon. But Kett not having any of their grievances met, refused this and the impasse continued. Because of this, the city officials shut the gates and started to prepare their defences against this rebellion. So it was here that Robert Kett set up his cannon, overlooking the city in a very strategic position. very ironic seeing as in the other direction now in modern day times behind me is Norwich prison but that's a much more modern thing in the days 
when Robert Keck was around, people were locked up in the castle and other places around the city down below. Keck's artillery now set up, opened fire on the city. Lucky for Kett, the artillery that the city had down the slope hadn't got the range to go uphill to meet his artillery. So at that point, Kett ordered his army to run down the slopes and storm the city. Thousands of the rebels now charged down the hill and began swimming the river to get into the city. The city defenders fired arrows and muskets but could not stop the attack. The running battle ensued and they tried to address the rebels. England's second largest city was now in the hands of the rebel army. The King sent the Marquis of Northampton with 1500 men including Italian mercenaries to quell the rebellion as he drew close to the city, he sent forward one of his men to um, demand sur surrender from Kett. But um, the Lord Mayor of um, Norwich responded and said, well, Kett's gone again. Kett had re retreated back up into the hills. He knew it was too hard to defend the city. So he again laid siege while Northampton and his 1500 men tried to defend the city walls. The Royal Army, now in the city, started patrolling the streets and making defensive preparations against the rebels. But under the power of darkness, the rebels were using their knowledge of the um, narrow city streets to make raids on the um, Royal Defenders. Lord Sheffield, one of the um, Royal Army, suggested strengthening up the ramparts on one side of the city, I think it was in the east, just to stop the rebels getting in and then it all seemed to quieten down. So they retired to a hotel for breakfast and then heard word that um, the army wanted to su surrender, the rebel army wanted to surrender. So they went off to the um, appointed place to meet them. When Lord Sheffield got there, there was nobody there for him to meet to take surrender. But at the same time, thousands of rebels started crossing the river again and attacking the Royal Army in the streets. Mayhem ensued. Northampton's main force was in the marketplace. As the attack developed, he fed through the streets into a growing and vicious battle across the whole eastern area of the city. Seeing things going the rebels' way, Sheffield took command of a body of cavalry and charged the rebels across the cathedral precinct. Expecting to be captured and ransomed as the rebels' fight was strong, he removed his helmet only to be killed by a blow of, from the rebels. With the loss of a senior commander and his army being broken up in street fighting, Northampton ordered a retreat. The retreat did not stop until the remnants of the Royal Army reached Cambridge. The celebrations were short-lived for Kett and his rebel army as the king sent a new force to quell the rebellion. Well things were looking quite bad now for Kett and his rebels. The Earl of Warwick had arrived with 12,000 men, including mercenaries from various other countries. And the writing really was on the wall 
when 1200 Landsknecht from Germany arrived, riflemen and pikemen, and Kett knew he could no longer hold on to the city. So the rebels all retreated, the ones that could, through an area of land called Dussindale, the location of which is now lost in history. But they fought their final battle. It's thought that 3,000 Kett's 12,000 men were killed in that battle with only the loss of about 250 men from the Earl of Warwick's army. And depending on the story, between 30 and 300 of Kett's men that couldn't get out of the city were rounded up and hanged in Kett's camp on Mousehold Heath. Robert Kett's brother, he was captured, and then a few days later, Robert Kett himself was in a village outside of Norwich, was also captured. Kett and his brother were taken to the Tower of London to be interrogated and charged with treason. They were found guilty and scheduled to be hung, drawn and quartered in London. But I think um, the authorities then decided that probably London was too remote from East Anglia. So Kett was taken to Norwich Castle and hung from the walls in chains and left there his body to rot as an example to all other rebels in the future. Robert Kett's brother suffered the same fate, but this time on the tower of Wyndham Abbey, which was kind of the start of all this story, but it was an example to all those in future not to defy the crown. It's a bit of a sad ending and Kett might have been wiped from history had it not been for some of those people in the 18th and 19th century who rediscovered his story and decided that there should be various monuments to this person who fought for the right of the common man. So although Robert Kett was executed as a rebellious traitor back in the 1540s, his name lives on to this day as a bit of a folk hero. This pub here is named after him, the Robert Kett. He's also had this primary, or this elementary school named after him, Robert Kett Primary School. And this old people's home, Robert Kett Court, all named after him. So certainly in the eyes of the locals, his name lives on. And Robert Kett is my local hero, a champion of the people, you might say, fighting against the man. So if you made it this far, thanks very much for listening. Please leave a comment down below what you might think about my um, little history piece. I always reply to comments and I always appreciate them. It lets me know someone's been watching. Because although I have fun doing these, it's always fun to know that um, somebody actually watches them. So this has been Old Man Tony, goodbye.